like this. Or like this? Uh, good enough. <laughs> oh, potatoes and molasses. If you want some, I'll just ask us the warm and soft like puppies and socks filled with cream and candy rocks. Oh, potatoes and molasses. They're so much sweeter than algebra class. If your stomach is grumbling and your mouth starts mumbling, there's only one thing to keep your brain from crumbling. Oh, potatoes and molasses. Hi guys! We're getting in one last Halloween video under the wire and making an entire Over the Garden Wall themed menu. Now, Over the Garden Wall was a limited series that aired on Cartoon Network in 2014, and it's chock full of autumnal atmosphere and vintage Halloween vibes. I highly recommend it if you're looking for family-friendly Halloween fare this season. My friends and I had an Over the Garden Wall marathon day at the beginning of October, and I decided to make something inspired by my favorite song in the series, Potatoes and Molasses. I was pretty sure making the dish as described in the show wouldn't be all that tasty, but I remembered coming across an old potato candy recipe online before, candy made with actual potatoes and layered with peanut butter. We're going to swap the peanut butter out for molasses cookie butter to keep the candy on theme. You'll need about 20 of these Archway Soft Molasses cookies, and 2 tablespoons of coconut oil, and about 2-4 to four tablespoons of water. Start by adding your cookies to the bowl of a food processor. Then just process until you have fine crumbs. Then just add your coconut oil and a couple tablespoons of water. And continue processing until you get something with a peanut butter-like consistency. You may need to add more water as you go, so if you have something that looks like a ball of dough like this, you're almost there. Just add a little more water. Here you go, now just transfer to an airtight container and set aside. For the potato candy, you'll need one potato, peeled and diced, a half cup of salted butter, a teaspoon of vanilla, and a whole lot of powdered sugar, at least one two pound bag. Boil the potatoes until fork tender, drain, and then mash them as you would uh, when you're making mashed potatoes. I used this potato ricer that I got for Thanksgiving one year, but feel free to use a regular potato masher or even a fork will work just fine. We'll only need a half cup of this mashed potato mixture for the candy, so I thought I would use the leftover mashed potato to make the dish as described on the show and give it a try. Hot tip, if you have a jar that you can't open and a weak grip, you can tap the lid of the jar on the counter to loosen it. Here we go. And here I am deciding whether or not to spit this out or power through. Yeah, can't say I'd recommend this. There's a reason molasses is usually paired with another sweetener like sugar in recipes. It has a sort of smoky, bitter flavor that's not great on its own, so let's keep making the candy. To the potato, add the butter, vanilla, and a cup of powdered sugar. Then mix it with a hand mixer until well combined, and it'll be uh, pretty soupy at this point. Just keep adding powdered sugar until you have something with a dough-like consistency. First you'll get something sort of like a frosting, and then you're almost there. Should take probably seven to eight cups total. Now just lay out some wax paper and sprinkle more powdered sugar on it to prevent sticking. Mm. 
Roll the potato candy out on the wax paper, and you can use more powdered sugar to uh, prevent it from sticking to your rolling pin. Then just spread all of that molasses cookie butter on top. Now this made more potato dough than I anticipated, so I did also use some peanut butter to make a traditional version. Starting at the long end, you'll want to roll the candy into a log, and you can use the wax paper to help you along with that. Then just roll the whole thing up in the wax paper, cut it in half, and put it in a gallon-sized storage bag to chill in the fridge. Once chilled, just remove your candy logs from the wax paper and cut into about a half inch slices. They may crumble a bit as you cut, but don't worry, you can just smush them back together. For our next candy, we're going to make chocolate truffles that look like Greg's Rock. My friend Casey came up with these, and you can see the original version on her Instagram, which I'll link down below. It's a rock fact! For this, you'll need five ounces of dark chocolate, finely chopped, three quarters of cup heavy cream, a quarter teaspoon salt, and three bags of Lady Grey tea. I chose Lady Grey as an homage to Marguerite Grey, the tea merchant and Quincy Endicott's rival slash romantic interest, but you can also use Earl Grey or even chai tea if you'd like something more fall flavored. Heat the cream and the tea bags in a small saucepan until boiling, then reduce to a simmer for just a few minutes. Remove the pan from the heat, the tea from the cream, and immediately dump the hot cream onto the chocolate in a heat proof bowl. Let the chocolate and cream sit undisturbed for five minutes, then stir to combine. The chocolate should all be melted, but if not, you can heat it in the microwave at 50% power for 15 to 30 seconds, just to make sure it's completely smooth. Cover and transfer to the fridge for an hour. To make the truffles, scoop out about a tablespoon of your chocolate ganache and then roll it in the palm of your hands to make a sphere. And this can be a little messy, so I did decide to use gloves instead of my bare hands. Then coat with Dutch Process or Hershey's Special Dark Cocoa Powder. and repeat with the rest of the ganache. To decorate, I used royal icing in white, blue, yellow, black, and red to pipe the eyes and the mouths onto a sheet of wax paper, and then I just let that dry and removed it afterwards. Then just use some more royal icing in a piping bag to attach the eyes and the mouths to each little truffle. I found this was a little bit easier if I brushed off any excess cocoa powder where I would want the face to go before I attached the little candy pieces. Lastly, a little something inspired by the citizens of Pottsfield. Casey originally made these pumpkin hand pies as a sweet dessert, but it felt like we needed something savory with all this candy, so I switched the filling to a pumpkin and cheese one. I'll include both versions on my blog post, linked in the description box. 
For the savory one, you'll need one package of thawed puff pastry, one cup of pumpkin, a quarter cup grated Gruyere cheese, a half teaspoon salt, a pinch each of cayenne pepper, and nutmeg. Add all the ingredients to a bowl and mix to combine. Now just unfold your puff pastry and roll it out a bit until it's around 50% bigger than it was in the packaging. Use a pumpkin cookie cutter to cut out all the pie shapes, and if you have the time and the patience, you can use a knife to cut out faces in the pumpkin. I also used my icing tips uh, as eye cutters, which worked pretty well. Add about a tablespoon of filling to the bottom crust of the pumpkin shapes, then top with the little faces and crimp the edges with a fork. And you can see I baked one of my pumpkin pies on a lollipop stick so that I could add ribbon and create a little Enoch. Lastly, brush on some egg wash to make them nice and golden brown, then bake at 400 degrees Fahrenheit for 15 to 18 minutes. And that's it! Of course, I had to try everything to make sure it was tasty. And it definitely is. The truffles uh, melt in your mouth. They have a slight citrus flavor from the tea that reminded me of those chocolate oranges at Christmas time. I was a little worried about a savory pumpkin pie, but it was actually really good. Cheesy, buttery, flaky. And the potato candy was a definite improvement on the recipe. I'll only warn that these are very, very sweet. They are basically buttercream frosting in candy form, so you may want to cut the recipe in half. I don't know if anyone can eat all this sugar. <laughs> I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Have a happy Halloween. I'll see you with a new recipe before Thanksgiving. And that's a rock fact.